Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 DTL. Happy New Year, everybody. It is the early part of January in the year 2024, if you're watching this many years in the future. And we are back for more Halls of Arden Vool Mega Dungeon action using the old school essential systems by Necrotic Gnome. The Halls of Arden Vool is, of course, by the esteemed Richard Barton. My name is John. I am your referee for the evening. And going around the horn, we have a full house. Hi, I am Mike. I am playing uh, second level assassin Darius Vile for our A-team excursion so far. Hi, I'm David. I'm playing Upior, uh, the first level necromancer for our A-team excursion. I'm uh, Matt. I'm playing Yal Oakhart, the uh, fifth level whisk inviter. And uh, yeah, he's proud to be on A-team until he can get back to his little buddy. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Ted. And as usual, I will be playing the role of Mortis J. Gobliano, and he is hungry because he's goblin. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Way to start oh, the new rocks year. Fall. <laughs> the rocks are going to fall. Rocks fall, you all die. Okay. <laughs> I, so, I earned it. <laughs> as the players point out, we are going to start with A-Team, which we have not checked in with for quite some time. Um, and so this is the team that is somewhere that they have no idea really, but they have encountered gargoyles. They have encountered beastmen. They have encountered some sort of fear elemental thing. They have, uh, encountered goblins, um, and they have been running for their lives because of a, a fear induced co uh, compulsion. So. Right now, it is the 3rd of Jelenios um, down in the dungeons. It is approximately 10, 10 a.m. Um, we have, uh, we have, we're not going to go over it right now, but we are going to attempt to uh, institute some new death and dying. Well, hopefully we won't have to, uh, to uh, institute them, but some new, de some new death and dying rules that we're, t we're testing out. Um, if the circumstances warrant, we will walk through those. Um, and we also have a couple of new spell casting house rules as well, um, which we'll also see if they actually come into play. Uh, one quick, just general retcon that we're going to do is that I made a bad call last time. And, uh, when we, I was just making an excuse to introduce Upior into the party, I had him be a prisoner of the Beastmen first. And so I had stripped him of all of his gear. It's not a fair way to start a fresh character. Um, so I am just, I'm just giving, I'm not giving he's, he's, starting his character as he made him and he's going to have all of his stuff and that's just the way it's going to be i was just looking for a silly excuse to have him join the party upior has his spell book all of his gear um and he is the strapping necromancer that we all know and love i don't know uh, i'll be able to play with a spell book if i'm honest <laughs> yeah, I, i'm not really sure don't forget it's to reread the magic rules. it's a little intimidating i will say uh because one of the viewers corrected us it's opior not upior i'm going to try my best to say opior opior on as well got it okay um so why don't we get a quick recon, a quick update from all of you guys as to your character's status? Uh, let's just go around the horn again and give us um, your hit points and any spell. I guess it would just be uh, Opior, um, the spell that you have memorized. So just uh, give us a quick hit point update, like how many you have out of how much. I'll go first since I'm uh, first in rotation. Um, second level assassin. I am at full hit points. I have nine out of my nine hit points um, and an armor class of 15. Okay. Nice. Uh, Opior uh, is also at full hit points at uh, 22 out of 22 and has uh, memorized wait, 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 skull wait. speech. <laughs> I, back up. Back up. Hey, if, I say, if I say it's what? real, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> I, have, I have four out of four HP. On yeah, it's more like it. Uh, uh, and, 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 uh, <laughs> and Opior has also memorized skull speech. Skull speech. Is, uh, mm. uh, with cool. an AC 14 uh, in right. chain mail. So yeah. you, you didn't want to. You didn't want to pick a spell that does damage, or um... well, yeah. the beauty of rolling for spells, Mike, is that I didn't <laughs> roll a spell that did damage. Oh. <laughs> There's a very distinct reason that I'm in chainmail right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 okay. Okay. I'll go next. Uh, yeah, I'm playing y'all. Uh, he's got uh, thirty hit points. Uh, approximately what seven <laughs> opioids. <laughs> um, and uh, out of a max of 41. So he's, he's still hurting from like other things, but you know, he's comparatively doing rather yeah, well. world's smallest fiddle right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, guys, come on. He's, he's down more than twice some of your HP. Um, 
Uh, uh, what's he? He's rocking an AC of 16. Okay. And you know, there's one thing that's really cool about him that hasn't really come up, but May is uh, he has a cool amulet of protection from normal missiles, oh. which hasn't really come up. But uh, I will totally forget. So don't forget to remind me if that. Uh, oh, I will. I will not forget. Yeah, cool. All right, Mort. And uh, Mort is currently at 12 hit points um, out of out of 15. OK. And uh, he is a tiny little tank. He's uh, rocking a 20 AC. Holy Because he cow. got uh, Goran's old magic shield. Wow. And with the pin. He's sharp and hard to kill. You should have um, uh, should have lied about that to me, Ted. <laughs> uh, but you got the pin. Okay, cool. Yeah, I have the pin. I have the plus two shield and uh, twelve hit points, and uh, I got a plan. Okay, cool. You, so you I'm going to put up things for now. For, for now. For now. <laughs> I'm going to put up the um the the. Uh, thank you. Come on. The map for the audience, um, the the actual map, the one that the players can't see. Um, okay. And let's see. Actually, you know what? Let's let's just throw it over to Miro as well, so they can kind of see what uh, Ted has mapped yeah. so far. So, uh, the large room in the center there is where the beastmen in the gargoyle encounter happened. The beastmen came from the east, from all three over all three of those uh, beastmen made barricades, right? Mm -hmm. And you then ran out to the west. You encountered some sort of double fear effect. Like if you remember, you kind of went through the door and something burst on the ground, like an arcane symbol. Um, and that's where most of you failed your saving throw, right? And you were compelled to run everyone except Mort. Mort, however, was left to face an actual creature that took on the shape of everyone's worst fear. So as the rest of the party was running at full uh, at full speed through doors, not with much choice at all, Mort was basically kind of being the rear guard and trying to face off against the um, that that weird creature that took the form for more of his greatest fear, which is a form by Boone with very good reason. Um, and uh, moving through that next chamber to the south, you you heard and then saw once more came in with a torch that there was a fountain with a uh, like a, a fish shape that was that seemed to be absent of plumbing, but um, the water was coming out continuously into a basin on the eastern side. There is an open door there, which you uh, didn't go through, but instead you went through a smaller door in the southwest. Running um, through that, you burst into a large chamber that seemed to be a temporary camp for a bunch of goblins that seemed to have also in the past suffered the same effect that you were currently suffering from, as if they had encountered that fear creature as well. They... Because you were kind of bursting in, they um, they also were sort of taken aback by you, but they kind of understood what was happening. And as you were about to go north, they were like, no, no, don't go that way. And they told you also that west was a uh, blocked, was blocked as well. And so they pointed you and they said that you're going to die anyways, but the only way you can go is east, right? And so you um, you ran east, a sword was kicked over to o Opior, the, um, uh, Darius grabbed a torch which I have that down. There is six more turns. You're freshly with that torch. You have six turns on that torch. And you moved into a very small, 10-foot wide, three-way junction, <coughs> right? So there's the door behind you. There's the door in front of you to the east. And there is a very small door to the south. Mort is still back. And he's all the way back in the fountain room. So the party is kind of separated here. We have Mort by himself in the, in the fountain room. The rest of the party is all huddled. Um, the fear effect has just dissipated. Darius has just become invisible, which I believe is his second use of the cloak today. So he, has one, so he has one more use, and you are in that small little room. Now, uh, when I rewatched the episode, you had determined that you were going to go south. However, you do have free will at this point. Before you decide what to do, because I, I was very careful, I rewatched exactly what happened. You opened that door, and then we stopped the. We switched over to um, another team. Okay. Oh <laughs> Are you sure we opened that door? You, you did open the door. You didn't. You didn't say you stepped through. You didn't say you stepped through. But uh, but Opior was like, I kick open the door, right? <laughs> I close it right back. <laughs> you're you're so, all welcome. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna pick up right there. It's ten ten a.m. You have six. Um, you have six turns left on your torch. Everyone has free will. Mort is separated. 
um, more you can hear you heard like the goblins and the ruckus in the other room coming down from that corridor 30 feet away from you okay um the meanwhile the rest of you as you open that small door you can see that there is a small narrow five foot wide passageway that goes a 20 feet to the south and then hooks a 90 degree angle to the east and coming okay. from that five foot wide passageway five foot wide okay. passageway directly you know coming from that south door and then it hooks, feet, then and hooks, it hooks, hooks to the east and you east. can see that there is a flickering light like firelight or lantern light that is emanating from around that corner okay and as soon as the door opens and you see that light you hear a voice from beyond around that corner say are you friend or foe how do we you know how to answer that question can we detect any accent to the voice um no i would say i think it would probably be pretty unique actually does it sound like a dead person talking to us nope okay it sounds like rich but kind of the way i'm actually speaking you know friend of course <laughs> <laughs> All of you, yeah. I hear multiple feet pattering. Well, we uh, we don't have any uh, cause to bring any harm to nobody. Ain't gonna car harm us. Well, then enter, friends. It's a dragon, isn't it? I hope so. You don't have to. You have total free will. Like your plan, I think, was to walk right back to those goblins. I, I thought we were, and it would be nice to have um, Mortis J. Gobliano, the Uber tank, with us. Uh, you know. How about how about I call out this fellow? Yeah, you know, you know what? Uh, we left something in the other room. We're gonna be right back. Hang on. Okay, you hear? You uh, actually hear like from the same voice. You hear like a. <coughs> <coughs> Very well, then I will be here recuperating. Oh, it's weakened. Get him now. <laughs> <laughs> he coughs anyway. again. Need you any uh, uh, libations or salves? That cough is quite harsh. If you have any way to. Here, poor soul here, wandering the dungeons, then, then why, yes, that would be most grateful. Thank you, friend. I, myself, we'll look, am we'll look for some, a little weak at the moment. This isn't John introducing a new PC, right? Like, we didn't die by that. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. <laughs> we yeah, if you're alive, on your hand. John wants to play, too. He's, you know, he feels left out. He wants a chance well, to Well, close caught. the door after you. I wouldn't want to get a draft. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go talk to him so bad. Uh, it's fine. Let's talk to the Let's just get more. Let's right, get more. We'll come back. More. Okay. So you close the door. Yeah, we'll be right back, friend. Click. <clears throat> okay. So there's a door in front of you to the east that you have not gone through, and then there's back the way you came. Oh, uh, we did, we through. were kind of panicked when we came in here. John, what does what does it look like in this room? I don't even remember the description. Uh, there's, it's just a, uh, it, it's relatively dusty. It looks, no, I wouldn't, actually, it's not. I would say that there's actually been a decent amount of traffic through here, um, but it just uh -huh. seems to be a plain junction room. Like there's no, no decoration at all. But like worked Arconti and stone, not just yes. like natural caves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All worked. That was yeah. fine. Um, yeah. So I, I'm going to open that, uh, that door to the West kind of slow, wave my hand out. Uh, hey, little fellas, we're, we're feeling a lot better. Uh, uh, we just want to come back in and talk a bit. Okay. So they, the, um, whoa, whoa, where is my cursor? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Um, they, so they, they kind of get up. They're already still like in an alarm because it's only been a mere seconds. Right. And, um, and they've got their arms up, but they're looking at you and they're, they're like, are you sure? Are you, are you sure you're okay? Uh, well, uh, I mean, we're, I think we're pretty okay. At least we're in our right minds now. We, we're not so scared from whatever that thing was back there. Seems like you guys know a little bit about that, too. I think you know what it was, right? We have no idea what it was. Something supernatural. It was the worst. It was different for all of us. Um, the one that's oh, talking uh, is uh, what appears to be their chief. His name is, uh, he introduces himself as Harib. And you also remember that there was a female spellcaster as well. Um, huh. uh, th as well, there are ten other goblin warriors there. Uh, well, coming on, we're gonna we're gonna come back on in now, and um, you know we're not bringing any uh, 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 aggression with us, so uh, uh, I think we can all just kind of sit down, peaceful, have a little talk. With you know, we had a, a little friend who was behind us. That uh, did he come on through here yet? 
Can I, I walk in way? at this point? You sure can if you want. Uh, so at this point, Mort comes clanking through the door, sees all the goblins, and begins immediately speaking to them in goblin. Ah, my friends, my countrymen. <laughs> How pleasing it is for me to see you here in this place. It is I, the fearless Gobliano. <laughs> and you are you're dressed in like imperial gear, right? That's right, yeah. Full yeah. orca, so huge old magic shield, sword. Their eyes go wide, and those with wide lips actually go like wider, you know, and there's like a like a whispering and all that kind of stuff. And you see that they um uh the the uh, witch doctor, like the 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 the, the, the spellcaster, um, she kind of peers at you suspiciously, and she whispers to her sub chief in his ear, and uh, he like nods a little bit, um, but they and he kind of brings you over. Come, 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 come in. Indeed, my brethren, what was that thing back there? Some mere trifle, an annoyance. Ha ha ha. <laughs> they they like they're like <laughs> ooing and awing over there. Like they kind of do that uh, chimp thing where they they kind of come up to you. And they're sort of just kind of, kind of touching your gear and your head a little bit, and in his pockets, looking at your cheeks and stuff like that. You know, like whoa, you're like you just you're just different looking than the, than what they're used to. You know, uh, and right. it, there's a lot of, uh, they probably have a slang term. I don't have one for you, but there's probably a slang term that sub subterranean goblins would have for above ground goblins. You know, and like a lot of that term is like being thrown around. You know, I heard, I heard they call you guys tids. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, I was gonna say uppity twats, but you know it's whatever we <laughs> <laughs> uh, six of one, you know. Uh, you, know, you, know uh, you are you are trapped. It's it is good that you are no longer under the effect, but you are all trapped here just like us. I fear that you will you suffer the same fate as us. We will all die here. We will all die. He, I, actually, I should say, he probably says that quietly to you, bringing you over so that he doesn't kind of spread the panic amongst his men. Right, right. But, yeah. Uh -huh. I don't want to... Oh, okay, go ahead, Ted. No, I was just going <laughs> to... I would love Bravely to hear pose. you exchange. <laughs> please, please speak with him. I want to watch. Uh, never fear, Chief. Um, my name is Mortis J. Gobliano. To whom do I have the honor of addressing... I am, I am Harab. I lead this pack. Mm, and well done. You have, d and uh, I see from the survival of your of your pack, you have you have led them well. How is it that you come to this place? Oh, the great king, the great king Weskinum sent us. Yes, proud Harab and his pack with yes. his mighty, mighty magic user Larakim, and to uh. fire to scout to scout. Yes. And you hear like uh, one of the warriors in the back goes, but, uh, but, uh, but, but boss, we have that other, shut up you. Yes, to explore. <laughs> That's what the king wants. Yes, of course. The king is well known for his desire to r rule over all of Arden Vool with his goblin hordes. Mm, indeed, yes, Mort, you are wise. You have heard. I'm sure you have propitiated yourself at the feet of the great king. There. We, why? We have slain many halflings that stood in his way. Halflings. And he like yes. <laughs> hacks up a big wad. Almost yes. as, bad as bad as those dog worshiping humans. Curse them. Curse them. And they all look, they all look towards the um one moment. They all look towards the north. As as they as they curse the Setites. Um Okay. That's useful. That's very useful. Yes, it, it yeah, is. I wonder if there's any C team correlation here. <laughs> yes, we are exploring, exploring. Mm, indeed, if you if you decide to continue on to the east, know that your death awaits you there, but probably much slower than going in the other direction. The you should know, however, that if you go back the way that you came into that room with the fountain, which is where we too came from. We discovered in our explorations that there is a secret door that connects in the southern end of that room to the room that you were about to enter into. Mm. Ah, to the east, you say? Back the way that you came. No, no, you said that the door, the secret door connects to this room to the east, yes? Yes. Yeah. So, to, as yes. A, as me talking as John, um, he's basically yeah. saying in the fountain room there is a door. There's yep. a he, they found a secret door to the south that leads yep. to the room. If you had continued running directly east, yep, it would connect You're to going there. in there. Yeah, I got okay. that. Okay. Uh, but we... why, why, good Chief Harab, do you feel yourself trapped? 
Surely you are doughty fighters. Ah, I will tell you. And he, he kind of squats down in, uh, in cross leg, like before, like their little cook fire that they've got kind of going, you know, and he's, and he points. And as he points to the north, like all of his men, it's kind of adorable. They kind of all point to the north too. <laughs> so like every time he gestures, they sort of mimic it. You know what I mean? So John, he's like, can I ditch, sorry, can I ahead. ditch this party for them? Can I join them? And they're pretty like, awesome, right? <laughs> 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 I have no he, allegiances, right? <laughs> he points like one uh, one chubby, fat uh, index finger to the north, and he says, To the north, we fought. There was 20 of us when we, as an ex exploration team, we were trying to go as stealthy as we could, but as we were exploring, there you can see now, there was only 12 of us left, for much of, our, much of our party was destroyed in a great battle to the north. Just beyond that door is a battleground where we fought those dog-worshipping infestations that they call themselves humans <clears throat> to the north. However, after we lost many of our men, we retreated, they retreated. We shut the door, but not soon, not only days later, we heard horrible sounds, moaning and shuffling coming from beyond that door. Something has happened to those corpses. Um, Ooh, I, can I, am I here? Are they speaking in goblin still or common? No, they're speaking in Archontian for the sake of everybody. Oh, I'm going to peek up to that <laughs> for obvious reasons. <laughs> and he, he says, to the west, as we said, as you were running through here, a cave in. It is blocked through that door. To the east, where oh, you were okay. bound, there you will, there was some sort of fearsome armored opponent, a great man covered from head to toe in gothic armor. Armored, armed with a great lance that burst forth fiery energy and burned to a crisp a few of our members as well. And it, after that, there's a narrow corridor that leads east that led to a brightly lit room. But unfortunately, when we were exploring there after our after the devastation that was wrought by this <laughs> the, this armored man, we triggered in that room a gas trap that made some of the goblins fall asleep and we had to retreat because we could hear the beast men coming from there as well. So, so you can wanna, see we are pinned oh. on all sides, friends. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Man. I just, for us. Joker's on just the right. Like, there so the guy we heard is in the general location of where this gothic fires. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I do want to pipe in uh, uh, when the northern setite you know, battle is mentioned and the moaning and say, Oh, friends, I may know precisely what is occurring up there. The dead may have rise, but lucky for you. And I kind of like, I mean, I'm a tall guy, right? Like two drunk legs. What do we say? Six, seven, very large whiskey. Lucky for you. I know the secrets of conversing with them. Oh, they all Don't like, be afraid. Don't be afraid. Hi. <laughs> and I'm going to look, I'm going to look directly at, um, Hara, uh, Harab and Larakim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Harab first to like acknowledge authority and then to shift my glance to Larakim yeah. and say, I may be able to exchange some of this knowledge with your own uh, 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 magic maker. Uh, perhaps if we could look at each other's books, it would be mutually beneficial. Okay, so she's like, she she's dressed in rags like the rest of them, basically, but she has like this little staff. And yeah. um, despite her slimness, she kind of walks with like a little bit of a, a limp mm -hmm. and she kind of comes up to you sure. and she does the same sort of thing where she comes right up to you. She comes basically yeah. up to like your mid thigh mm -hmm. and she um, and she's kind of she kind of gently paws your robe or whatever. You're, are you wearing a robe? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're wearing. Uh, I'm wearing chainmail, so I don't think I'm wearing a robe. No, I'm like, okay, I'm decked in armor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah, decked. You got a sword. Yeah, you got a. Yeah. I got a whip, a sword, armor. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So she says. But I'm going to look at her gently when she does this. I'll, I'll be very soft uh, uh, when she comes over. Okay. Yeah. She says, uh, you know the secrets of the dead. You can speak with them, yes? I can. This is great wisdom, forbidden knowledge. Mm -hmm. I, I covet it greatly. You wish something from me? Yes. You have a book of your own, no? You have your own knowledge? I'm assuming she's arcane and not a druid. I could have messed that up, but a you said book, which doctor? A book, and she kind of rolls the word around in her mouth. Uh, book? Something to... Mage. Something, oh, oh. A yes, a record, a record of the great spirits. Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. And she pulls out um, and she pulls out like, I don't know, from a sack or something like that. She pulls out this crazy sort of it's almost like a mobile. So it's like Hell it's yeah. like it's like <laughs> st sticks of roughly carved wood that are strung through the center of them with like twine. And so, so they kind of alert. form like like if you kind of spin them with air, they would form like a helix. Mm. Do you know what I'm, you can oh, kind cool. of picture that yeah, in your yeah, head? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And y'all doubted of, me when I said the goblins are who I should side with. I mean, come on, with technology each, like this. Each one of the sticks, each one of the six <laughs> is is uh, engraved roughly with um, mm. goblin writing on it. Uh, mm. More, you can tell from a distance that the writing is extremely crude in a debased form of right. the goblin, um, uh, the native goblin tongue in the in the Arcantian Empire. Um, from a meta level, John, it has only occurred to me now that it might be interesting to try to exchange spells with another spell caster if we have the time to do so. You can certainly do that. that is possible. Oh, yeah. That's basically what I'm offering in exchange uh, with her. Yeah, I highly encourage uh, it. It takes time, of course. Of course, yeah, um, yeah. We would have to survive or, or rest and all these other things, but it's something that I'm I'm offering as a value exchange. Th this actually brings yeah. up a real quick change in the rules. Um, but it's not a change. I, I guess it's just sort of reinforcing now that we're kind of talking about it, is that you you need a, 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 a spellcaster's book, whatever shape that takes, is always in their own particular language, right? Mm -hmm. Which is why it is still required that you have, you have to cast read magic on another person's spell book, mm -hmm. but not a scroll. That's the change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. But this is her spell book. So you could certainly do that, but both of you would actually have to cast read magic to read each other's stuff. Yeah. No, but I would be willing to waive that if you were both mentoring each other face to face, talking to mm. each other. Okay. Oh. Love okay. that even more. I mean, because it's part of the puzzle. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I'm pitching to her. If, because if we're How? trying to like spend time with him regardless, it may mm. be downtime worth taking. But, um, yeah. So I'm yeah. not I'm not familiar. How long per like spell level does it take? I I don't think there's any clear rule for like actual face to face mentoring. So I would I would say that it's definitely not a downtime thing. I would say it's a matter of um, uh, probably hours. Okay. Um, I would say let's why, why don't we call it like one hour per spell level? How's that sound? You know I love that. Sorry. Right, so, I, mean, uh, if you're, if you're I don't. I don't yeah, everything, right. I don't want to so. obviously um, freeze our actions here. This can be something I can do later with her, though I'm going to be very interested in keeping her alive no matter what. But if we find that we're going to be with them or we want to rest or doing like that, that's what I'll be doing. I'm just throwing that out for you all. Okay. Yeah. So Harab's okay. like, uh, you know, no escape. No escape. Our food. So I says, our dwindling do have food. Well, it's only going to prolong the inevitable, unfortunately. Do you have a means of escape? Do you know? I, I fear that the I fear that the fear thing is going to prevent us from going anywhere. Can I ask him? Um, so, are there any landmarks on this level? Where did you come from? I want to see if he can kind of help us beat in on whether or not the, we're on a level that we previously explored. So I'll like describe the debouche room. Um, I'll describe like the monkey level room, you know, area, and see if any of these are like yes, well, that's where we are. Or anything like that. Does that make sense, John? Uh, yes, Can absolutely. I... So he says that he, uh, okay, so he tells you, he says, we came, we came through the, the the caverns that are ruled over by the great chief Killick. Yes, yes, down below. And then we exited his caverns and we talked to the great counselor Gog. Of course. Ooh, Gog, Gog is the guy on. Gog is the Gog loves all goblins. And then we went up out of his cavern and we went up the staircase and we came out at an entrance that was between, actually, hold on while I check my map. Which, <laughs> which I- What unfurled. room number is it, <laughs> man? <laughs> this, is after with, this is after the king told us where to go. And we came, uh, where to explore. We came up and out and we came, traversed through a corridor and then we went south through a door that was it was very strange, wasn't it, men? Yes, it was. Why was it? Why was it strange? Because they all say it was between two mouths, and each mouth was warring against each other. One proclaimed the glories of a god called Thoth, and one proclaimed the glories of the dog-faced men. And then we headed south. They, they entered here from the debouche room level. Well, it, it kind of sounds when, like when, it. when when you kind of when, whenever you um bring up the uh, the description of the debouche room, they're like, "Yes, yes. The top of the staircase exiting Gog's cavern is right near that area. 
the Plumthorn's territory, yes. He's still in control, yes. Of course. He's still exploiting everybody, yes. Of course. Mm, no. Yes. We <laughs> headed south we headed south from there, past a barricade. The beastmen had set a trap, and one of them took one of ours with a spear trap. But we went south, and it was only much further wasn't much further that we came into the Great Hall. So as you know, the Great Hall is the only means of escape, but it is a no man's land, a, a, an area that is being fought over between the halflings of the Plumthorn Gang and the Beastmen. We are doomed, friends, doomed. The Great Hall, isn't that the room with the Beastmen and the Gargoyles? Mm -hmm. But Plumthorn's Gang was fighting there too? They think that the Plumthorn Gang is still in control of the territory that the goblins are now in control of. Okay. Right. They've been here a while. But, they also um, tell you that they've been here for a little over two weeks. Oh yeah. So yeah. Mort and y'all know better than that, though, right? So whereas uh, uh, I don't, obviously. But right. guys, they're kind of like those um, those Japanese guys on those remote islands that weren't aware that yeah, World yeah. War Two ended. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, Mort will uh, uh, happily, you know. Well, that's the halflings I was referring to that we slew, and uh, <sighs> the goblins now rule that territory uh, fairly and with great wisdom. Wait, what? What? Oh, yeah, they, 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 they look stunned as you just sort of offhandedly throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, we, must, <laughs> we messed up them little halfling fellas pretty pretty bad. None you mean the king, the king messed them up, yes? The king the king finally rose up and sent his troops no, and slaughtered them. No, that was us. Uh, they all well, yeah. was there. None may stand before the mind of Mortis J. Gabliano. <laughs> <laughs> they, kind of, they look very suspicious at you. Like this claim, um, because it's basically you're saying Mort and y'all did it, right? And uh, and they're just like, yeah, I will okay, okay buddy. You, I will confess to you, Chief Harab, we had as brothers in arms many of the bearded ones, you know, the short fellows with the, with the beards. <laughs> Yes, I know, but <laughs> strange almost, bedfellow. Almost worse than Setites. <gasps> Racist <laughs> little bastards. <laughs> so it sounds like okay, so if we're trying to parse out his description, which was a little vague, I he's talking about great caverns and Killick and Gog, but then he mentions the two mouths, which really does sound like the debouche room just south of it. And now, also Ted wrote Ted, remember, he he just said that one of their goblins got killed by a spear trap. We saw them dragging the body through the debouche room after that happened. Mike with the and, recall yeah, we saw again. that spear trap. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and, and we saw a... them when they when they were the, the secret door between like yes. right in that hallway with the magic mouse. Right. We say Ted was a staircase that went straight down. They went down there and a beast man killed their guy. Yeah. Right. So. The, the that question is, I'm remembering that no, that's, that, that's correct. Although that secret door and staircase is not between the two mouths. Although it right. does look like on our map, we have a, a door marked there or something marked. Okay. Yeah. Is it, so my friend, in that hallway, we are close. Yeah. We are close. So, so are we on the debouche level? Is that what he's saying? That's what I'm taking it as. It sounds oh, like it. We, it sounds like we just got to go north. We fight our way through. What exit? Oh, I mean, like we had to drag this draw. map over to the other section somewhere. What? <laughs> what, area of, what area of the Great Hall does he say leads out? Because okay, good all, question. The, all the rooms are blocked off by the beastmen, except for those ruined double doors. The, yes. So those are the doors that they came through. And they entered in. Those are the main. That is the main entrance into the Great Hall. Obviously, they're big double doors, right? Okay. Yeah. So Opior should have run through the map for all. He yes, had the right too. idea. <laughs> me too. You and I should have gone that way. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> all right. So I got this. Here's what we do. Sure. Yeah. We go east. Back. We go east. We deal with Mister Gothic. We talk our way past him if we can. We go. That was my nickname in high school, by the way. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. We go. We go uh, deal with a few uh, beast men. And then we head north back into the Great Hall. Hopefully all the gargoyles are defeated and or back in their roosts, and we run like crazy for the double doors. I mean, or at least we stake it out until they finally stand down, right? Okay, so let me... Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mike, sorry. I was just going to say, it sounds like there was an actual definitive battle between the Beastmen and the gargoyles. Like, the, the gargoyles may okay. no longer be a thing, you know? So, uh, can you guys see my pointer? Sure. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So your 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 problem is is that no, I um, can't hold on. Now I can. So the problem is is that um, 
this is the room basically which has the fear of bit thing yeah. or whatever that basically prevents you from executing that plan do you see what i'm saying Didn't you say that that mr gothic down here connected up with beastman over here yes he did yeah okay that's, to his... my, that's what i'm talking about yeah Oh, I'm sorry. I also wanna, I if we can get break. access to the Great Hall again through one of the Beastmen barriers, through negotiation or whatever, they, then we they can... have they have lost lives on every direction that they have possibly been able to go, and so they are right. telling you that there is no way to get back to the Great Hall without facing that fear thing again. That's what they that's what they have surmised. Now they're not the brightest kids yeah, in the block. I, but... I think it's worth talking to Mr. Gothic at least. If we yeah, I I agree. If we if we talk to him, we can find out is he, you know, is he, you know, setting us up? Is he just going to attack whoever he can? Or is he somebody that we can reason with, maybe get him, you know, help him out. Say we know a way out. You can come with us right. or whatever. Because uh, they might, you know, he might see goblins um instantly as enemies no matter what right which means Whereas, i don't like them <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> a little education perhaps sure i have two i have two two things one uh john did telegraph that he can shoot fire out of his lands yes. so he did say that uh, i would not i would not be though he may i don't think he's necessarily ambushing us because he probably from his uh demeanor and his armor is probably just not unlike mortis but uh very unlike mortis an ostentatious human may not like uh his what he considers his lessers uh but uh also i want to point out that i mean in whatever circumstance backed way if we know that we're in the debouche room and we have a connection point now from team a and team b we and we also know a conflict went on between the setites and the goblins right north of us here we may have a connection to team c in some way if we can navigate through that that battleground it doesn't mean we should pursue it now, but if we are seeing setites where we have not seen them prior, right? That means they're emerging from somewhere, right? Like yeah, you, you should. Um, uh, I. It's a great, a great point, David. I also want to remind you, David. Mike probably has the recall ability for this. Don't, uh, way back in the early episodes, don't forget that um, to the west, far to the west of the Debouche, in your very first explorations, you yes. encountered evidence of setites. You didn't you didn't see sure them, did. but you were definitely yeah. saw like a temple that had been defaced by setites yep. as well. Remember uh, the room with the right. tentacle I monster. About that. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. The room with the tentacle monster. That's um, right. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to ask, I see the doorway right here, Ted. It's like bang, it's right there, right yeah, between the yeah. pyramid and the room with the floating green mist in the pool. Yep. Um okay, so um what Which color we could double check actually with these goblins? We could say right by the pyramid and the green yeah. mist. And, and they say yes, then we're talking about the same two mouths. Were so, goblins like swimming in that pool and shit and using it for like recreation? After, <laughs> after the scouring. Yeah. After the scouring. Right. After the scouring. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to ask the goblins, uh, John, is did that gothic did Mr. Gothic's armor have a particular color to it? Uh yes, um, it did. I believe it was black, but I can uh confirm. Give me one moment, please. Uh, I was hoping it would be Azure. Uh no, it's not Azure, it's oh. not Azure. Okay. Is that, is that all you want to know? Red. If it was Azure, um, black is bad because black means <laughs> he's probably not a good guy. They, they said it I was. Uh, 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 they, uh, they remember clear. Although it was a, a pitch battle, and they were um, completely overwhelmed, is the way that Harb Harb kind of puts it. But he remembers clearly that it was um, black with plates and uh, huge uh, pauldrons, and uh, everything was like oversized and 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 um, and uh, very very intimidating looking had elaborate gold and silver chasings on it as well he doesn't use those words obviously um, can i ask them who initiated the combat oh sorry mike uh they they so uh they they were after they they had um retreated from the fear thing uh, into this room they had done some tentative exploration to see if they could escape um and th uh they admit that <laughs> um, I should probably do this in voice, but whatever they they uh, were exploring. They entered this chamber, they th through the hallways and they encountered this uh, thing and they were immediately hostile towards it, assuming that it was going to prevent them from moving forward. And so the thing uh, reacted in defense. They kind of put it the way that they sort of relay it is that it was all its fault. But you can quickly parse that they were yeah. um, okay. uh, aggressive because they were mostly scared. Do any of them have do any of you have? Go ahead, sorry. 
I was just going to make a joke that this might be our, our finally our crossover into Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely just describe the um, space marine. <laughs> Uh, do do any of you have a, a bandaging or a poultice or anything like that? I won't ask why. I won't mention why, but I don't believe any of us do, right? They they kind of point their like scraps only, yeah. and you could see like numerous wounds on them, like they've actually got like you know stuff around them and. Um, okay. Does anyone have? Sorry. No. no, I was just gonna let's go talk to Mister Gothic. I, I don't agree, think I agree, we but... have any healing. We don't have any healing ability. Um, every you know, food? is not here. <laughs> food for us, yes, perhaps for the goblins. Yeah, uh, they're, they're like malnourished, they're, they're like starving. I have yeah, seven I days' think. rations. I have seven days' rations. Um, say but it. what I what I wanted to ask, what I wanted to ask though, regardless of whether we have actual healing or not, is if anyone in our inventory or theirs has like a vial or anything that has the appearance of a potion, right. Or something like that. If, for instance, hypothetically, this guy is evil and is trying to ambush us, but I come in and say, here's the potion I'm bringing you, and it has water in it, it may buy us a little time. All I'm getting at is, is like, I want to have a, a, a stopgap. None of us have anything in our inventory like that? I have actual so, potions. Uh, they, you have actual uh, potions? Oh. Um, oh. Okay. Wait, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, Nyal seems to have a little bit of cocaine. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> hey, baby. <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. Little apple light, baby. That stole cap. Keep if you need a skin, not enough to share, guys. Not enough to share. If you need a skin or a vial, I'm sure like the goblins probably have one lying around. If you want a source of water, there is the fountain. If you, right. if you I have water. My point is just we said we'll be back with the poultice, so we're trying to either give them a real potion or you know fake them out. It behooves us to have that at the ready in some way. So right. well. I uh, no one agrees. That's fine. We'll just go talk to him. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we should go talk to him. I think we should go okay. talk to him and see what his okay. condition is. Uh, why don't we take a quick little break to uh, empty bladders and refill beers, and we will see what happens when they go talk to Mister Gothic, and uh, we will be right back. Awesome. Okay, we are back. Beers full, bladders empty. Let's continue onwards. You are heading out of the room. Um, do you give any food to the goblins or no? Guys, I I've can't. got four days of rations. Um, I say we give them give them something. Look at the little fellas; they're skin and bones. Come on, yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't I have seven rations, so I'll give them a uh, three. And I say I don't have much, but we'll start with this. Share it amongst yourselves, and and if we find more, we'll bring it to you. Okay, they they're I'm trying very to carry like, favor. Yeah. Like, thank you, thank you, great lord, thank you. Um and. And they 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 wish you luck, and they say we hope you see you soon. Please be careful, of, careful of the fiery lance. Um, and you head out of the room. So, uh, so I was uh, David. I told the other guys this. I'm going to say that the conversation with the goblins took three turns, like a half hour. Okay, so it is now um, 10, 10, 11, 12, 30. It is it's twelve forty, right? Uh, I'm sorry, ten forty in the morning. Okay. Okay. So you head into that three-way junction. Um, you go down. <laughs> you, you open the door. Friends, you have returned. Please Indeed. come converse with me. <laughs> He's got the Rona. All right. Let's, uh... Uh, uh, so, yeah. So, well, so we. Yeah, we. Uh, we have indeed. Uh, you yeah, know, we're we're coming here in uh, in goodwill and peace. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, bringing any violence your way. Are you going to um, zap me or anything when I turn around this corner? <laughs> Friends, you have nothing to fear from me if you come with goodwill. I can tell that you. I can sense your reticence in your voice. Come, step in. Have a conversation. I'm a bit indisposed at the moment. I'm not feeling myself. Otherwise, I would usher you in myself. All right. Taking a little L, I, right? I feel yep. like Mort, Mortis J. Gobliano has the best saving throws out of all of us. And <laughs> he, his head around the, around the he does. If this guy may also have a, a you know a, a problem with the short and the green. Oh, that's actually a good point. You might get your he sees, going out just he for, sees for yeah, one of those faces coming out. So, I've uh, got the, the Roman helmet, you know, okay. and everything. Uh, we can't yeah. risk we can't risk Avaricios. We can't David is already David, you you've earned a pass. Avaricios is very safe. Let's let me all go. 
Oh, right. Not avaricious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I am I am probably the second most expendable. So I, I'm willing to go stick my head around a corner. No, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Niall's N- N- got this. He's been talking to him. He's like, okay, here. Yeah, here, smart. Uh, here, here I come. I'm with, I'm with a few folks behind me. So, uh, you know, don't be startled. We've got like three or four folks. Uh, oh, shit, I can't count. And he's just going to like peek his head around, going to hold up one hand. Okay. Wow. Uh, so you see uh, the, the dimensions basically is that that small corridor, that five foot wide corridor continues on for another 10 feet before it opens up into a, um, a larger chamber. That chamber is 30 feet east to west by, uh, by 20 feet north to south. And you're, yeah. enter, you're entering in on the western side approximately five feet down from the north. Okay. So what you see, y'all, whenever you peer through into that room is that there is a a pretty glorious looking room, like very kind of luxurious looking despite its relatively small size. There is a ceiling that is uh, azure, some sort of strange blue stone, first of all, above you. Uh, And it's flecked with golden stars that appear to be relatively intact. Um, They're kind of glimmering in the light. There is an John, enormous. Does, yes. does, does, that sounds a lot like that room that we've been in before in that secret passageway. It, it's not a. It's uh, not was, a. It, it's a good recall. It is. Um. It is not an identical one. That one sort of had like the the glimmering starlight looked like silvery yeah. starlight. This is more gold, um, but okay. it does give you a very similar vibe. Yes. Um, okay, sorry to interrupt. Yep. There. There. On the eastern wall, there is an enormous fresco of Thoth, and. There are numerous furnishings in here. Most of them are in, are deteriorated and in bad shape. There is a four-poster bed. There are two tables, a desk. These are all ancient, of ancient make. So you can tell, like, it's not like the, the person that's in here um, brought these in, right? Like, these are, these are old things. Um, and uh, the other <coughs> remarkable furnishing, which is where this thing is reclining upon, is a settee. Is it settee or settee? Settee. I always say settee. Settee, yeah. Uh, a settee. Reclining on this is a uh, a tall figure, looks to be human, with its helm removed, which is at its feet. And it's, you know, so it's settee, right? So he's sort of like draped across it, right? You know, but he's still wearing his armor. Is this, uh, appears to be a human. Um, who was sort of sprawled along there. He, his face, he, he himself is a pro- probably about six feet tall, reclining on this settee. He's slim and wiry build. You can just tell from his, uh, from the shape of his head, although he's encased in this like carapace, like uh, plate mail, huge and oversized with massive pauldrons and uh, huge greaves and, uh, it, you know, a huge uh, uh, cuirass and, uh, uh, he himself has coal black hair, a very thin nose, and his pupils are what's strange is the pupils themselves, not the irises, but the pupils are bleached of all color. So instead of black pupils, he has white pupils. Okay. He has, um, strangely enough, though, around his eyes, there are laugh lines, and he himself is smiling, a very easy smile. Uh, uh, what's noticeable when you look upon his face besides the very disturbing eyes is that his cheeks themselves are horribly scarred, but appear to be deliberately scarred. They are raised welts on both of his cheeks that are in the shape of a circle with rays extending from them, almost like suns. All right. They, they appear to be old and they have kind of healed into whitened scars. His face appears to be abnormally sallow, however as if he has suffered some sort of debilitating injury or is su- suffering continuously from that. Around his brow, he wears a circlet, which is a slim a, a slim circlet that is silver with a large emerald right on the middle of the brow, sort of like a lendil, right? Um, uh, but it, he's encased in this black, silver, and gold uh, chased armor, right? The armor, uh, uh, Ted, what do you call the two, the two things that are like right here? That's two circles that are on... You know what I'm talking about? Yep. They're called Besigues. Besigues? Besigues. Besigues. So his, he has two Besigues right here, and those themselves are also in the shape of uh, 
of suns with radiating spikes coming coming outwards from them. All right. So do those suns match any kind of religious iconography that we would be um completely with? foreign to you. Completely foreign. Um so the uh in addition in the room uh let me just check I got everything here. There is a uh, so he's that is sort of uh, that that settee where he's sort of draped is along the north side. The four poster bed is on the east wall, which is so it's sort of like covering a lot of the Thoth fresco. On the southern wall is a large stone chest that is closed. Okay, um, so he sort of he's on one elbow, reclining lengthwise along the settee on the settee, and he's just he's very much at ease. Oh, and uh, draped at his feet, right next to that helm, which is a, uh, it's a, uh, once again, 10, I might ask you for this. It's fully encases the head and also the cheek, but has like a slim, uh, a slim opening up from the chin to the nose and allows the eyes to be free as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So I don't like a Spartan sort of thing or something. <laughs> right, right. No, I know what you're talking about. Uh, they, they go, depending on the shape you're talking about, they have different names, but I, Almost like a hoplite sort of thing. Does that make sense? Is that is that is that correct? Um, yeah. Kind of, well, so is it Greek or European in origin? A Europe. It would be more European, I guess. Probably talking about a burger now. Let me. Well, go That's ahead. Fine. I'll, yeah, but you, you can kind of you can kind of get it's it's almost closed vi visored, but just like a slim amount just for the eyes. Um, Excuse me, is that thing on your face a burgonet? <laughs> we were just. I was wondering. Uh, but. Uh, Disturbingly enough, at his feet and next to that helm, okay, is it runs the length of set T and even more is a long black lance, a slim lance that has a silver tip on the end of it. Okay, and uh, so he, he kind of raises up and he, with an easy grace, you know, he kind of stares at you with eyes sort of widen with those white pupils, and you're just like, what the fuck, you know? And he's looking at y'all down that corridor, and he's like, yes, friend, come in, come in. Uh, well, I'll, I'll step in. I'm like, wow, you got a, a pretty fancy setup down here. Well, I, I can't say it's my own. I appear to have inherited it. <laughs> well, uh, uh, you, uh, you know, you mentioned before and you hear your little cough in your, in your throat there. You, you feeling all right there, buddy? I'm not, I must admit. I was... Unfortunately, accosted by what I, I can only assume that you yourselves have encountered. It was a strange creature that showed me uh, it was in the shape of my greatest fear, and I fear I was taken unaware, and it latched on to me in, uh, in a fit of of uh, in a in a fit of fear. I was unable to disengage, and it sapped the life force out of me, and I unfortunately and in, in Running away without any sort of free will, I encountered numerous enemies who beset me. Goblins and setites and all, all manner of, of hostile creatures. I don't really understand why they would attack one of, one of my <laughs> order, the Sun-Scarred Knights, but here we are. Sun-Scarred Knights. Oh, that's, that sounds really nice. Would, would we have ever heard of Sun-Scarred yeah. Knights? You have not heard of them, no. Um... Can can I, guys? I was wondering, like, and this is just a sidebar, and I'm sorry, but I, I was wondering if it would be okay if my character just kind of comes across as like a servant, just like really kind of bland, doesn't really look like an adventurer. I don't look tough at all. Like, I just want to blend into the background, right? So, um, you guys can just like treat me like a servant in front of like NPCs, and then that way they won't suspect me when I sneak into the room and murder them. Is that cool? <laughs> 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 all right Love i see it. where you're getting that all right yeah, I'll, be, uh -huh. I'll be like the torch bearer i'll be like the guy that's like yes yes oh can i get you a cup of water you know something like that okay. <laughs> friends I, we I've, get cups of water i've been remiss where are my manners should introduce myself the name is sir simonette i am one of the i have the privilege of serving the master and I am of the Order of the Sun Scarred Knights. Welcome to my temporary chambers. <laughs> well, uh, uh, that's uh, right kind of you to share your name like that. Uh, uh, I'm Njal Oakcart. Pleased to meet you. I, I am kind of curious. Uh, uh, 
uh, I, I, I'm not familiar with your order there. It looks very fancy. looks very uh, honorable. Ah, oh, um, you're new to the halls then. Well, y'all. Welcome. I offer you the gift of hospitality, as poor as it is. Well, uh, well, I, I, I thank you. Uh, would you would you like to meet the the rest of my group here? They're right uh, right down the hall here. They're, uh, you know, the fact that they're alive is uh, a testament to their, uh, as you can imagine, their natural caution. Well, I, if you have survived the fear creature, then I, you are no doubt doughty explorers. Step into the light, please. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll step on in and make room for the for the guys behind. Okay, this, well, we can assume like that you the hmm? get introduced. Is this like when the hobbits get introduced to Bjorn there? Uh, you know, don't introduce them all at once. You got to do them slowly one at a time. You don't that is absolutely with. not what we're going to do. We're going to <laughs> go forward and we're going to assume that you have introduced yourselves. So introductions are made. He's very pleasant throughout. Okay. <clears throat> all right. So, so, John, there's no exit out of this room. Is that what I heard you there say? There's no exit, yeah. Uh -huh. Not that you can see. We can see. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, I am uh, kind of curious. How, how long have you been down here? Well, now, how long has it been? Well, I haven't seen the sun in, well, all my life, practically, I'd say. It's very difficult to tell the passage of time down here in the halls of Arden Vu. But I would venture to say it must have been nigh on... I'd say probably about a week or so, give or take. Why are you giving off a strong, like, Gary Cooper vibe with this guy? <laughs> I prefer to think of it as more of a Charlton Heston sort of thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd exaggerate it, though. Needless to say, you know, I hate those damn dirty apes. I was going to yeah, say, yeah. I know a whole thing. <laughs> oh, they oh, 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 apes. Oh, they're awful. Um... So you've been you've been here a week, you say. What 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 laid you low? I I missed it. As I explained, Mort, it was that fear creature who laid hands on me. Sucked the life right out of me, I should say. Fear creature, fear creature. Hmm. I walked right by something that everybody else ran away from. That was huh. Oh well. More doughty than I. I I tip my cap to you, Mr. Gobliano. You truly are a hero of stalking the halls of Ardenvu, and all should fear you as you continue forth in your journey. I like this guy. I like <laughs> this guy. <laughs> I like this guy a lot. Um, John, I'm going to take, like, an extra shirt, and I'll start ripping it into bandit. Does he have, like, visible wounds? Uh, no, it's... he. Ha not that you can see. He, you know, he's fully encased in this massive armor, right? It's only his head that's visible, but you can tell that he... Basically, mechanically, he has suffered a, an incredible amount of con loss. Right. Ah. Uh, okay. Uh-huh. Okay, but I he also, I thought he also got into a fight with the goblins, so I would didn't I wasn't sure if that was like, he did. Right. Yet. But he didn't take any damage. No, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> I would play armor class in the that show. Uh, best, best power in the game, kids. <laughs> <laughs> and yet he was almost killed by the uh, uh yeah. the yeah, guy who did not care about his armor. Room. Now so, as up oh, guide. Well, okay. so uh, I'm, I'm curious about many things, but one of them is if, if you've lived in the halls of Arden Vool your whole life, where? Where are you living in here? Ah, uh, Neo We've fights not seen all. anything like that. Well, you obviously have not plumbed the depths enough, or you have yet to visit perhaps the forms of Set, or the Inn of the Lost, or the Great Arena. Or the Troll Thane's Court? No, none of these ring a bell to you, do they? You've heard of them. Have you visited yeah. at least King Weskinum's court? No? Um, no. We've just been running for our lives the entire time. Well, the halls do have many perils. Yet we, uh, the sun scarred knights, are welcomed wherever we do uh, doth trod. In the halls of the mighty, we are always welcome, for we make sure that everything remains in equilibrium here in the halls. Oh, he's going to hate us. <laughs> Does that mean that you could, if we were to assist you, that you would be able to get us by some of the factions between us and the exit? <laughs> well, my friends, f f uh, uh, friend, I would say I really am going to be just fine. And there's nothing that you can do to really help me. I will recover and then I will continue my mission. And 
We are not allowed to give aid. The master proscribes it. Now, Who's that said, master? I have do. I do. There are some things that I do desire. Perhaps, uh, and he kind of he kind of peers at you a little bit, like knowingly, like spiritually. Do you, uh, friend? Do you happen to be a connoisseur of the magical art? Uh, I saw a guy pull a rabbit out of a hat once. <laughs> I've had people shoot the hell at me. That is not exactly the kind of trick I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. <him. laughs> well, if you're talking about turning tricks, that's a whole different story. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, every time he laughs, he, large, when he when he laughs, he's, it's like very genuine. You can see like the the laugh lines crinkle. You know, because he's done a lot of laughing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Like maniacally. I was gonna say, no, I, I'm actually yeah, telling right. you, like, it's very genuine. Like, he, he actually has, like, a very sort of easygoing laugh. Like, he just, you know, he appreciates your sense of humor and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, David, no. you can out yourself if you want, but I won't out you as a spellcaster. What, what magic do you have in mind, friend? Well, my, my. He kind of finally kind of rests his eyes on you. And <laughs> <laughs> you just are. Just looming me. above the others. <laughs> I find myself usually the tallest person in the room, but I fear that I must once again tip my hat to one of the members of this small party within my chambers. Hope you are. Have you yourself ever heard of the cult of the Eighth Collegium, known as the cult of Priscus Pulcher? And he looks at you very keenly. Well, my friend, <laughs> I I have a great ancestor who may have. <laughs> um, we're just treating meta knowledge as meta knowledge. It doesn't matter. Is, is that the, what, what's our yeah? That's, that's fine. Tact yeah. on that. Yeah. Uh, and I have, in fact, uh, 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 learned of this individual. Uh, why do you ask? Are you a member of his uh, clergy? As it is, as it were? No, no, no. <laughs> in fact. I find my I have a personal vested interest in knowing more about this cult. I mean, it, it just happens to be that the master himself desires to know much more about them as well. So therefore, I find myself wandering the halls and trying to find clues as to what their business is here. They are the self-proclaimed eighth collegium, and as you well know. Being, as I can tell, some of you are citizens of the M of the Arcantian Empire. There are only seven Collegia, but they call themselves the Eighth. And Isn't I greatly desire to know about, about this uh, Priscus Bulcher, who, if I if I'm not mistaken from my studies in my youth, was one of the great heroes of the Sortians. Yeah, this is this is what the Civil War was about, isn't it? Yes. Inextricably tied to it. Yes, Mr. Yeah. Godley. I know I can tell you are a student of history. I don't want um, to actually well, hurt it. Do we want to reveal that we found Priscus's chamber or no? <laughs> no, well, I didn't you, think you so. Found, you found, you're talking about the pillar room? No, no, no. The uh, earlier, early, earlier, way at the that r little uh, room that was off the tip of the chasm. The chest yeah, that, board that board. Omnir yeah. climbed into the, the chasm and found sort of like an antechamber that looked like a chessboard. That's what yes. I'm referring to. Ah, okay. Yeah. Which is on this level. It's on the debouchement, yes. Um, yeah. uh, level, rather. Um, That's true. I don't think it's we'll reveal that, right. but I'll, I'll say I have I have seen hints of his passage. Uh, uh, would you uh, 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 want us to bring you along to it or bring information to you for your master? What uh, form of help do you seek? on this matter just any news you would have of their passage or what their aims the, might be in the halls would be great be useful to me both me and my master do you have any literature on them that i might borrow from you <laughs> that i might uh have be better equipped to search for it unfortunately i do not mm. question remains the fact that it is well known that priscus pulcher was a hero of the sortians but the fact that there is a cult that has grown up around them in direct uh he doesn't say uh but in direct violation of the laws of the arcantian empire is something that intrigues me 
More so because they seem to be centered, they seem to have a vested interest in the Halls of Ardenvul. And as the Halls of Ardenvul are precisely the Sun Scarred Knight's bailiwick, we desire greatly to know what it is they seek here. So, would you be reluctant allies with them if your uh, goals aligned, or do you see them as uh, apostates to the cause? Oh, we don't take sides. Mm -hmm. We just desire to know what's going on. Guys, do we want to negotiate for this dude's help, right? To get us by maybe the Beastmen or something like that, right? Um, in return for sh telling him the location of the uh, Pulcher Vault. I'm not telling him the location yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've, we've given up, like, too many secrets to other parties in the, in the dungeon. A lot of competition. And that's a really, yeah. really big secret we found. Friends, oh, I can I sense your reticence, and I completely mm -hmm. understand. Have no fear, and I, I appreciate the fact that you are looking out for my well-being, but I will recover, and I will re begin my rounds once again. And I can assure you that sooner or later, should you survive, I will see you again at probably either wandering the halls or in one of the great populous centers of commerce and trade here in the halls. Speaking of, my friend, have you made your way to the Setite marketplace? As I said, the forms of Set, of course. Who hasn't been to the great forms of Set? I, I haven't. Did I? Did I? Did I uh, miss when we asked him how to get there? He didn't ask uh, how he to get there. But he, he asked uh, when you asked about having seen the Sun Scarred Knights. He asked if you had seen them in various these various places. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do, do you know if the northern door, just a few chambers away, leads in that direction to the forums? The nor northern door where? I'm sorry. I mean, the north goblin. of the goblin camp. I'm kind of, if, if there's a way for me to describe, you know, uh, you you know just uh, in that way. Right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does this uh, lead in that direction? He, he thinks for a minute. He's like, in a roundabout manner, I suppose. Of course, the easiest way to... Uh, find your way to the forms of set is to simply go up the western side of the cliff face via the, the lift. Can we oh, get him to know is. in some capacity exactly where that is? And or could could he trans could he describe to Ted in such a way that Ted could write this down in a functional sense? We've we've kind of known all along because there was uh there yeah, was we've a, seen a it. Cave yeah. opening. No, we've I know. It. I know, but like I, oh, I want to know moved at the entrance to that area. That's the thing. I want to know. I'll just say, well, how, how, we, we know there were baboons. We're worried that there may be uh, uh, dangers on the way there or that we might be seen as hostile to the Setites. Is there any uh, uh, words of passage or allyship that allows us to enter these forums unharmed? How does Unenslaved. one save? Absolutely. Unenslaved. Should you <laughs> yes. come for the purposes of fair trade and commerce or diplomacy, they will not apprehend you as long as you mind your manners. They are a little bit of a hostile sort, of course. I would recommend that should you find yourself in the forms is that you should be very aware that they are basically two sects within the, the cult of Set. There is the cult itself, the church, headed up by the Princess Stephania. But there is the other, the other sect known as the Guild of Service. Oh, yes. Yeah. Who are the slavers? I figured you yes, should okay. avoid them at all costs. <laughs> and especially should you hear any whisperings about a place known as the Long Stair, you avoid <laughs> it. For traversing the Long Stair transgresses all of their laws, which they enforce rigidly on that level. And they will take you, and they will enslave you, or do worse for you. <laughs> so, why cool. would anybody <laughs> in their right mind go oh, on yeah, something yeah, like that? Yeah, that yeah, sounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy, those now, guys are dumb. Mm -hmm. So, if you approach openly via the main entrance, proclaim yourselves as wishing to do business at the forums, then they will, of course, allow you to. To there's a bit of a winding a winding route, but you will be unobstructed on your way there. I, uh, out of, you know, out of character, I admit, maybe this is like worth discussion as a group. Um, when we meet a character like this, obviously like playing them for information, it's really, it's really useful. But when his whole shtick is that he's like patrolled most of these halls, 
is it game breaking for to ask for his help to map out areas we haven't been to? Like what 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 he approach do we want to take? Oh, I missed that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. he's he does he's not gonna help but aid us. He's kind of open yeah. about that. He's he's, right. you know, he's Switzerland. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh yeah, he cool. uh yeah. He can he can he can he can give you info about uh, so uh so we don't have to keep on doing like invoicing kind of dragging out but um what he basically is saying is that if uh the the trade he's offering is if you can bring him uh knowledge of magical lore and uh even more specifically about the uh the Pr the Priscus Pulcher cult he would be willing to trade you information about the halls he's giving you this one about the forms because it's so well known as a freebie what that tells me is that the Priscus information is far more valuable than the Hall's information. Yeah, that's exactly what it tells me too. Sorry, this is why I don't want to tell you what didn't want to give. Okay, okay. I just wanted to clarify. Now, um, I, yeah. I'll only say that value is measured against like our ability to make use of it and escape. So um, sure. the other thing yeah. is he, he's in a room and he's like boxed off and he still has to figure out how to get by the fear trap as well. So maybe he's really not that useful for that purpose anyway. You know, all right. Well, I, I have a, I, I have a question. What do you, what do you know about the them uh, gargoyle fellows? They were in that the main hall just up there. They were uh, really scary. What do you know about them fellows? I don't exactly know what you're referring to there, my my young friend. Uh, you you mentioned that you uh, that you came down here and that you had that uh, you know little run in with the fear thing. Um, but the the big uh, the big room right next to it with all the columns. Yes, the Great Hall, of course. The Great Hall. Well, we, when we went through that thing, because we, we faced the fear guy, just like you said. But when we went through that thing, there were gargoyles all up along the uh, the wall there. They weren't there when you went through. Well, I can't say that I exactly remember looking up to determine that they were there. I simply passed through the hall as any right-minded person would do. Don't tell me that you dilly dallied in the great hall. Uh, there may have been a little uh, dally. Uh, I don't know if we went so far as to dilly. Tell me the truth. Now, you didn't actually go climbing up those walls, did you? <laughs> I don't know anybody who'd be dumb enough to do that. <laughs> well, they made good. <laughs> I can only assume that you spent too much time in the room and perhaps attracted the attention of the room's guardians. Okay. Might have been. Might have been. Um, well, shall I we? Did, we do have one thing we could sort of potentially offer as a sort of trade. We don't have it with us, but we do have a book about Priscus Pulcher that we've looked at. Um, on we're Reddit, I guess, but we have notes on it, so on. Uh, um, the notes on the followers of the Arch Trader Priscus Pulcher and suggestions for their destruction. And I seem to recall John telling us this is a pretty rare book. Um, so we could. What was the book called so I, can, so I can look it up again? What's that? What was the book called so I can look it up again? Um, according to my treasure notes here, it is called Notes on the Followers of the Arch Trader Priscus Pulcher with Suggestions for Their Destruction. We found it in the Library of Thoth. But that's in the stash yeah. of the Broken Head, correct? Yes, correct. which is the key here. Which that, that is predicated on our ability to protect that stash with our other team. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just <laughs> saying, it is like, currently can... in much jeopardy, I would say. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying yeah, we can give it to them. I'm saying we can yeah. say we have it. It's not here, you know. Mm -hmm. Or we could say, well, we read this book one time and we know some things. Sure. You know, and if he says, my God, man, I'd give you 10 million pieces of gold for that book, I would be like, yeah, that sounds great. Absolutely. Well, so I, I find wanna... myself in need to relieve myself. So <laughs> we're going to have to take a quick break and we'll be right back with this conversation. Okay, we're back again with the meeting between Sir Simon at the Sun Sky Night and the AV Club. <laughs> I got to you, I, John, I, I have listen. to say. Go ahead. I, I could listen to you talk forever, man. You know, it's, just, it's just roll. It's just like honey in your ears. The feeling is mutual, my friend. <laughs> John, I, I have to say, um, you know, we are playing OSR and none of us should feel like main characters, but you're really 
doing us a great disservice by having every NPC we meet be ten times more compelling than the cast of players. <laughs> can be further this from the like, truth, my friend. We, we can't keep meeting people who are far more interesting than us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that hard, honestly. I'm, I'm right here, David. I'm standing right here. I'm not make, trying to make you feel self-conscious. <laughs> All right. So, guys, do we want to... I mean... There's, I'm sure there's a lot to be learned from this guy. We can we can sit around and try and do that, or we can get moving. Well, get moving. Uh, there is one thing that I, I think would be really good to ask you, and uh, if yeah. you don't mind, um, yeah, yeah. about these beast men. Like, we haven't had any direct uh, uh, involvement with them or communication with them. Um, uh, what do you, are these? Are these just antagonistic fellows? Are they just going to attack us on sight? They were talking about intruders and stuff. We heard them yelling that, but. Uh, what, what do you know about these fellows? Well, Master Oakhart, I should tell you that those beast men are poor, cursed creatures, but they have done the best with their lot in life. But before I go any further, Master Oakhart, I do think that there is a give or take here with the exchange of information. I'll tell you enough mm -hmm. to know that you treat with them fairly, and they'll treat you fairly and kind. But... I don't think I'm going to speak much more on a lot of the topics about Arden Vu unless you kind of pay me in return. Well, you, you mentioned about this uh, uh, Priscus fella and wanting to know more information about, about those guys. Indeed. Um, uh, is, that, is that the only thing you're uh, interested or in, or in need of, my friend? That is of my primary interest or any sort of random fact about interesting magical lore. Be happy to take that off your hands. Hmm. Well, uh, uh, I did read a book once about culture. Uh, about called the called that it was called the the <clears throat> Arch Trader, a mournful complaint. Have you read it? I have not. He sits Indeed. up. He kind of sits up straight, <laughs> kind of like a little bit of effort. It's like any any uh, uh, so he puts his feet down on the ground and he sort of leans forward and with a clank he kind of rests his uh, forearm armor whatever that's called Ted on on his greaves yeah. and uh, he's like tell me more Mister Gabliano. Well, uh, we saw it uh, oh long ago. Do you remember where it was, guys? We saw it in some uh, some place. You know, uh, I know where it was. I'm just hoping someone will. He leans China back and he's like, "Ah, oh, you don't have the book on you, do you?" Uh, no, I'm afraid we we don't. But um, it uh, it basically talked about the uh, the Arcantian Civil War, war between the Sortians and the Theosophs, aptitude versus merit versus uh, or aptitude and merit versus limited access to magic, and was it claimed that this was the cause of the destruction of Arden Rule. And that the Sortians felt that anyone can learn magic. You're with me so far? Yes, yes, I follow. Very interesting. And now, what I think is is interesting is that uh, if anyone can learn magic, and Pulchor was somehow involved down here, I think it follows that that what you're looking for, maybe, is information about how people learn magic. Am I right? I don't know if I'd wish to discuss that matter further with you, my friend. No Fair offense enough. intended. Fair enough. No, nope, but this is taken. all very interesting. Continue. Well, uh, the Theosophs, who were uh, in favor of limited access to magic, included Set Tites and Thothians, and uh, so it looks like uh, Pulcher was on his own. Uh, this this eighth cult you talk about, perhaps. Now, you're telling me that this work that you are in possession of basically paints a bad picture of this culture. I think it was written by his enemies after the fact. Interesting. Well, that is good knowledge. Perhaps you are not as neophyte as I thought you were. So uh, you wish to know more about these beast men? Is that correct? Wouldn't uh, mind knowing a little bit more since it looks like that's our way out? Well, I'll tell you this. They serve a creature. Not exactly sure of her nature. She appears as if she is a woman. But who knows what her... She's been around longer than even I. Longer than the master, I'm not sure. 
But her name is Dino. I'll spell it out for you. It's D E I N O. She's very yes. yeah, that, She's the one they call her queen, right? Or their queen. Yeah, queen right? or mother or something. They indeed, call her, they? indeed. Now it is my theory that because of the military nature of the beastmen and the way that they seem to mimic the Archontian legions of the past, that this Dano has had control over their kind for some time, is in control of some sort of breeding program over the Do centuries. You have... I was right. Yes, hope you are. Do you have any sense that the beastmen are uh, of natural creation of ma or magic, being that I... they do mimic the legionnaires? That is one of my other brother's bailiwick, so I am not exactly versed in that sort of knowledge. But if, you, if I should venture a guess, I would say that is most certainly the case, Master. Mm. That they are indeed the product of magical inbreeding as a result of Dano's experiments. Her motivation? I couldn't say. Any idea why the dragon hates them? The dragon? What exactly are we talking about here? Oh, it's, it's really big, like flying lizard. They like money a lot. <laughs> he, he laughs. <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> I appreciate your sense of humor, Master Oakheart. Although I must, I must admit that I don't have any knowledge of a dragon stalking the halls of Arden Boo. Oh, he's he's up he's up above on top. I, I think it's she though. Uh, flies ah. up above the surface. Well, that answers the question, then. We don't, uh, the, the, the limits of my knowledge are bounded by the stone of the cliffs of Ardenvu. I mean, I'm going to say, guys, that's actually good news, right? Because, I mean, when we got to that great hall, it was immediately like, uh-oh. I thought it was going to be, sure enough, turn a corner and there's a dragon. But if there's no dragon down here, well, then all we have to worry about is the other monsters. <laughs> that's nothing. <laughs> um, I got one more question for him about the Beastmen, which is, you say they they sort of still uh, parrot or ape their ancient Arcantian legion origins. Do they still honor the old codes of, of brotherhood of legionnaires? As best they can in the disseminated form, they do indeed. They Excellent. are creatures of honor, unfortunately cursed by their origin. Therefore, there seems to be a bit of a stigma against them here in the halls. But yes, I myself would be happy to treat with them. With uh, Dano, nope. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I I'll can give you a that. name, though. If you speak this person's name, you may find solace amongst their kind. They have a great count who basically uh, uh, commands what they call their tagmata. And you know that tagmata is sort of like a corrupted term of what um, I, I think actually I would have to double check that if it's still a modern term, but it, um, it was the ancient term for a tagma, which was a like a cohort uh, a back uh, an imperial yeah. cohort. Um, his name is Scleros. He's a canny, canny beast man with a dog's head. But he is a from what I hear tell, although I have not spoken to him in person. He is the one that actually controls where and where the uh, the different patrols, the banda of beastmen, are sent out to explore and to protect here in the halls. Their center of control tends to lie right, I believe, they, they lie just east of the Great Hall. But they, like the goblins, are interested in some form of expansion, though perhaps not in the level of fecundity that you would find with goblins. Fecundity. <laughs> yes. yes. The subterranean ah. sort, of course. I meant no offense, Mr. Gabliano. Oh, none taken, uh, because you know how you get fecund? <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, more wear a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Okay. So uh, the, if there's any the, the, anything else you want to offer and trade for knowledge, or, or, or are you, what are you going to, what uh, what's, what's the deal? I, I, I would ask him, I'm like, um, you know, f- forgive me if this is rude. Uh, you kind of mentioned that, uh, you know, you're staying here, but this isn't really your place. Um, what What's in that stone chest? Is that, is that yours? I mean, is if, if it's yours, then hands off, but have you looked in there? Is that? I have not deigned to look in that chest. It is not mine. However, I would warn you against doing so, for if you look right over there, <coughs> sorry, I'm a little out of sorts. I can't make my way. You can look over there where the seam is. You can see that there are some runes inscribed upon the stone. Uh-oh. Unless I'm mistaken, they may be of the explosive kind, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I know that all too well. <laughs> now Why we introduce you to our friend uh, Mort, who cares not for these things. <laughs> if I were to guess, these chambers in this immediate area were probably, probably once used by the priests of the of the of the uh, Church of Thoth, and that pleasant abode that I happen to find myself in now. Maybe. Because it doesn't have any exit beyond here, is probably one of the high priest chambers. So I would think that in the high priest chambers with a stone hardy chest like this, guarded by explosive runes, that there's probably something pretty darn tasty in there. John, on that note, uh, could I search for secret doors, spin a turn, patting around and looking for. Uh, sure, know, absolutely, yeah. Various things well, on the wall. We can run it, we can bed, run it into the conversation as well. Um, yeah, I would but, say that the conversation itself is probably going to take about 20 minutes, which pushes right at um, yeah. 11 a.m. Is there anything specific you'd like to look for? Yeah, I'd like to look for switches and, you know, uh, 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 you know, pressable stones and stuff like that. But I'd also like to look under any furniture, uh, et cetera, for um, in, including like moving them to see if they're like bolted down. For for additional statues or you know, David, you secret right. secrets. You should look particularly on the north wall because of what, um, yeah, the goblins what, told us. Now I'm yeah, not sure they, that they the, came, yeah, Go ahead. yeah, I'm not sure that secret door comes all the way into this room based on the fact that we think there's something else in that yes. space. But um, seems like a good place to start is that north wall. Sure, I'm happy to start with the north wall. Okay, so that's I, where this that's where the settee is. So um, he doesn't yeah. seem to mind the fact that you're sort of looking around um, as he kind of continues the conversation. So you don't find any secret doors. However, you do see that it doesn't look like it was deliberately hidden. It just seems to be more for reasons of space. But underneath the settee, you can see that, uh, you know, so right in front of him, there is the, the helm and the lance. But underneath the settee, there, uh, you can see that there is a broad sword that mm-hmm. is underneath, which appears to be of the same sort of color scheme and make of the armor and the lance. Um, and there is a nicely folded cloak, which also appears to be sort of resting on top of the sword. Um, and in addition, on the back side of the settee, so sort of like uh, in between the settee and the wall, is a uh, backpack. Mm, I will snag those. No, okay. they belong oh. to the Jews. <laughs> Yeah, like he's he's like right there, like on, like on top of the city. <laughs> I misunderstood what you that, were saying. No, that's okay. Sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Excuse me while I just take your stuff. Um, uh, there's also that would be very funny. Uh, I, I probably should have mentioned I'm, this as, as when you were first introduced to him, but I'll say that you you kind of pick up on it as you're searching uh, Upior. Is that one other thing that he himself is wearing? is a and this is kind of strange too because he's got like huge fuck off gauntlets that he's wearing too like full hand covered um and uh but on uh, on top of the gauntlet on a ring finger of his right hand is a ring um and it is a copper ring that is set with a silver scarab beetle on top okay so and it's it's like massive right because it has to fit over that huge you know, uh, jointed, uh, you know, piece of the gauntlet. Right. So it's pretty massive and stands out. 
It we looks don't, we don't want to kill him, right, guys? We don't. We don't want to kill this this guy. I mean, <laughs> I'm you wouldn't say Thothian, Ted, I mean, but it, it's definitely has that, that ancient Archontean sort of look to it, you know, because okay, because of the, sure, of the okay. scarab, right? Yeah, he's yeah. very weak, right? So weak, so so vulnerable, Mike. I, <laughs> mm -hmm. I just don't think we would actually be able to get through his armor class. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Plus, I mean, honestly, guys, I think. If he survives and waters off into the dungeon, we've run into him again, and he could be a good ally to have. I don't think we should uh, yeah, spoil if, that, you know. He, if he information, yeah. if yeah. information is the currency, here's an ATM. Ooh. Yeah, well, we have to make deposits, though. So it's uh -huh. more of like a, you know, investment opportunity. But yeah, in yeah. any case. That's useful, man. Yeah. I mean, like I, yeah. like I said, the, the book, for instance, I'm not advocating giving it to him, but giving him information from it. Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. 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 So you can kind of tell, you get the impression after the conversation that he is, he, he gave you some dribbles that he just assumed that anyone who's spent any time in the halls would probably already know. So he kind of, yeah. he kind of pitied you and he's like, oh, well, you should at least know this, you know? Right. And then the one piece of juicy stuff was in exchange for, you know, so like the, the knowledge of Dano is not something that would normally be known. Or right? scleros. And scleros, and scleros, yes. Uh, oh, I don't know if I said this, but um, but scleros goes is uh, he's called. Uh, he he tells you that he calls himself a count, so he's called Count Scleros, is what he's. Oh, yeah, I got that. I got that. Oh, so I did say that. Okay, cool. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm guessing we could probably, you know, if we find beastmen, you know, maybe we could say we come seeking audience with Count Scleros or something like that, you know, and maybe not immediately get have to fight. He, he gives you that impression <laughs> that that was the case. Yes. Sweet. That is that is genuine useful currency. And I'm glad I mentioned the book. Um okay. Let's get moving. Mike's right. Let's yeah. so should we go up into the little square room and go east? I think we should. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All okay. right, we do that, John. Okay. So he says, I will see you hopefully within the halls somewhere, Tom, sometime soon. <laughs> it has been a I genuine so. pleasure. Feel feel better, my friend. Now we're we're gonna head up here and uh, take that little door to the east and see what's down that way. Any uh, any dangers we should be aware of going that way? I have not ventured so far east, although it does seem to be approaching the beastmen's central area. So well, be on your guard and treat them with respect, and you should be fine. Um, he okay. uh. He says, uh, he just, he, as you, as you depart, he just says, I will remember your names, friends, and tell the master that I have met some fine gentlemen in the halls. Very oh, well, your, friends. Who's your master, buddy? Yeah, who's yeah, the master? Who's the master. And he, like, his eyes go wide, and you, you're, like, you're focused on those white pupils, is the master. Right, right. <laughs> And yeah, see. I like it. That's the master. Okay. Showed up. Okay, so we'll, we'll meet him again at our uh, untimely end, I'm sure. All right, so that conversation took two turns. It is now 11 a.m. Um, uh, let's say, I, I'll say, too, that maybe you snuffed your torch, Darius, because there was light in the room by the, with a lantern. And so I'm going to give you another two turns on that lantern, on that torch. Um, so, yeah. So you are going to head east. Do you do anything at yes. that door? Open we it. should listen. Let's listen okay. for a whole turn, oh, guys. Why don't we? Why don't we? Gotta, we, gotta, we gotta do something. Yeah, <laughs> itching. I'm Open itching. It. It's eight forty-five. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get us right, killed, yeah. though. Uh, All right, if we, we don't, if we without a listen, if we don't hear anything obvious on that door, we'll open it up. But you're not spending a turn listening. Up. That's all I'm asking. Are you spending a turn? No, no. no. let's no? do it. Okay. No, okay. Open up the door. Okay. Seems to be a. All right. Seems to be a normal door. You open it up carefully, stealthily. Once again, that's the default mode. Um, and you open it up, and it opens up immediately into a an another chamber. That chamber uh, appears to be s almost similar in size to the one that uh, you you had met Sir Simon in. It yep. is um, forty feet east to west by twenty feet north to south. You are entering in on the western wall on the southern end of it. Okay. Let me switch over to Miro for the folks at home. As we watch Ted do his work. There is a, the only egress that you can see is the one that you came through and a small door on the far side of the room on the eastern side in the southeastern corner 
in the Eastern Wall. The uh, what's hold on? So there, uh, the the chamber itself has uh, an, a whole bunch of wooden furniture that has been smashed into basically kindling. Um, that has been, but the the smashed furniture has basically been thrown to the sides of the chamber in general. The original painted plaster that you that you associate with Arcantian stonework has been ripped from the walls and piled in a mound. Okay, uh, there is a path amidst this litter, which strangely enough leads from the north wall, which appears to be totally normal without any egress. There's a path that leads from the north wall that leads to um, uh, leads to the door that you have just entered in through. Does it okay. start? Like where I'm drawing a dotted line. Is that the right path? You got it, Ted. Yep, exactly. Yep, okay. The goblins told us there was a, a secret door. Yeah, that's, that's the line. But uh, yeah, speaking of goblins, uh, the first thing that uh, that you notice when you walk into the room is that there are two very badly burned and scorched and mangled goblin corpses that are against the south wall. They are blackened husks. The only reason that you know that they are goblin is because of their small size. I believe that is our uh, our knight's doing, because he shot flames out of his lance when they attacked him. That's my guess. Well, that's what I they said happened. Which is where they encountered him as they were yeah. shocked. They opened the, the the secret door. They went, "Oh God, there's someone here!" And he's big and scary. And they all attacked. <laughs> and, um, and to be clear, too, that the path is not like a uh, footprint. It's just sort of like the the whole room is filled with litter, and there just seems to be a clear path leading in, you know, in, in well, between. Well, uh, in, in that regard, the, the, what is the scale of the litter? Like, if is, is it something I could rough all over? Ugh. Does it seem large enough that I might find something underneath it if I spend a turn looking? Is what I'm getting at. Like, sorting through the litter, like detritus, or is it just like... Yeah, you could, yeah, a turn fluff. would do, a turn would okay. do the trick, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not like, it's not like torture? dense, it's just, uh, there's yeah. just kindling all over the place, but some of it's being yeah, kicked yeah. to the side. Guys, we have more torches because this one's about to run out. Well, we got all this kindling, but yeah, um, I think. Um, well, you know what? Promise we can't ventilate a fire, can we? I was going to say we should just use the kindling to start a fire. Let's. We know that where the secret door is. One of us should go look at that, while another one of us sort of um, searches the room. Is that fair or no? Do you want to just keep moving to the next room? I mean, I, I, knowing securing that door, make sure it's a, a point of egress is probably a good idea. Um, uh, John, the the is there any sign of anything living in here? No. Like the, these piles. OK, mm -hmm. so yeah, no, yeah. No webs or anything nope. like that. Nothing like that. Nope. All right. Well, uh, y'all will go in. He's like, well, I'll 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 do anything, guys. I'll, I'll check. He'll he'll go up and see if he can see it. Uh, uh, Oh, yeah. An indication of that secret door, um, at the at the base of that path, right? Sure, like where it would lead to. Yeah. So, y'all, when you go up there, you can tell it's actually pretty easy to spot because, first of all, you kind of know it's there, and also uh, it doesn't appear that there's been any attempt to hide the fact that it exists anymore. That that mound of of plaster that's sort of been piled in the center of the room appears to have once been actually on that section mm -hmm. of the wall and been pulled off. Okay. So the plaster mm -hmm. was actually hiding what was a fairly obvious door that's been sort of um, uh, built into the wall <laughs> once you get close. So you, yeah, you can kind of see the outlines of a, a you know, of, of a seam of a door. Okay. Okay. Um, well, well, while can, he's doing can, that, can, don't worry about is, it right now. Is it, is it open? Can I, can I open it? it? Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, you can, you can basically open it. Yeah. And there's just like a little hallway that leads you, you uh, want you want to open it? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, sure. what, yeah, when you open it, you can see that there is a 10 foot wide, there's a 10 foot square section that's in complete darkness. And then a similar door is directly to the north. Okay. 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 You got that. All right. And the goblins, I presume, have nothing useful on them. Uh, they, no, they are black and husks. There's nothing useful. Right. Is there any like to do. Oh, make a charcoal stick? Yes. Can what? I, can I, if we want to spend a turn here, can I spend a turn searching the room? And also, I would suggest, though it's a stretch, 
because there's a chamber between the two secret doors to search the eastern and western walls of them to make sure there aren't additional right uh, uh secrets oh inside that like, little chamber inside the chamber while i'm searching the room for like un, in the oh. detritus if someone else wants to search those two walls to just make there yeah, isn't okay. like a, a secondary secret no i'm, I'm, I'm in there thing. anyway i'll, you know, I'll, I'll look yeah, sure. uh, on the okay. eastern west i'm gonna yep. search the goblins Okay, so you spend a, a turn searching thoroughly everything that you can find, and you can confirm that there is nothing else of interest in the room, nor the cool. nor the the small secret area. Perfect. Was anybody okay. was anybody not doing something because that person could listen at the um, eastern door while the rest? I'll, I'll listen at the eastern door. Sure. You uh, why don't you give me a roll, Ted? Uh oh, dice, uh -oh. huh? Can I have one roll of session? <laughs> hey, John, where's the 50,000 oh. gold those goblins are carrying? Uh, you don't hear anything, unfortunately, Ted. Sorry. Okay. I What'd you say, Mike? One I'm more sorry? thing. Oh, good. What'd you say, Mike? Anything on those goblins? No, as I said, they're blackened husks. <laughs> Just well, to clarify, because it's been uh, quite some time uh, with the holidays, the fear inducing thing the horror was animate right it was a thing it was, it was a, a sentient thing, thing. yes correct sentient thing. but there was two effects uh, this is yes right um which isn't to say that this is a possibility but if we find ourselves wanting to get past it um we have essentially uh like one would in a spaceship for instance an antechamber we can try to trap it in via these two secret doors if we wanted to bait it towards us and have someone on the ready on the other side, I know that's a stretch. It is maybe a possibility if we don't all get feared in the process. Related so one of that, us that has a related to that. Uh, when I re-listened to the episode, you did take the time. Uh, you were careful to point out to me that you closed doors as you mm -hmm. were running, and the thing did not seem to breach doors. That's the that thing, which is why, which is why I mentioned we well. should have asked Seminette about that as well because. Um, I mentioned, I was thinking that too, John, like if we can get a door between us and it, then it doesn't seem to go past that. This is the thing. So if we could bait it either into the secret passage and just trap it in that square or into this room, if we don't need anything else from this room, it's more useful to have it trapped in here than in the other passage, you know, contingent on what's to the uh, east. Right. But like, I think that's an option if we, we can't fight it. And that would be probably more since he has the highest resistance would get their attention. And then we'd wait on the other side of the door to sort of close behind him. Anyway, pitching that for a future date. But I love so that idea. That's much. genius. You... Yeah. Okay, okay. So what do you do? Okay. Having listened at the Eastern door and heard nothing, Mort will open it. Okay. When you open the door, Mort, uh, darkness lies beyond. Um, Darius's torch illuminates 30 feet directly to the east. There is a very narrow five foot wide corridor, 10 foot high ceilings, Arcantian stonework, the usual that goes on for 30 feet, but then continues, continues on into darkness. Anyone have a nice long spear to tap the floor? <laughs> uh, no. Nope. I got, oh wait, I have a javelin now. Oh wait, I wonder if I have a 10 foot pole. I might, hold on a sec. Oh snap. The old classic. Uh, we have a bunch of detritus and, and broken up furniture. Yeah, John, in, 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 that, in the room mm -hmm. with the uh, with the dead goblins, is any of the smashed up furniture large enough to make a shitty torch? Uh, I would I say mean, we need make some a pitch torch. or something. But yeah, yeah, you, you yeah you would need you would need some pitch. Yeah, I, I got six. For more what torches. it's worth, I have six. I have six torches too. We have a lot. Of oh, torches. okay, 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 uh, okay. Never okay, mind. so. Um, it, it seems to have been, uh, you know, just kind of triangulating, like when the goblin said that they were here and where Sir Simonet said he was here, you, it, it stands to reason that there's, there's not much of a residual smell of the goblin burned husks, um, in this room, right? Because they're uh -huh. sort of desiccated and gone. However, when you open the door and you kind of peer into that Eastern hallway, there is definitely like, um, a, a, a fairly strong redolent stench of, of putrefaction and rot. Oh, like not the smell of beast men, unwashed hides, but the smell of corpses. Yeah, so of the of decay, of decay. Mm -hmm. Uh very dangerous. You go first. You go first. <laughs> well, uh, I don't. I don't mind as long as we can. Uh, well, I'll tell you have, what. Have the me, torch going. You know what? Mort will sneak ahead uh, out of the torchlight and use his uh, his uh, infravision. Okay. Um. Although, okay. of course, that won't show up the undead, will it? Yeah, the, 
They're well, usually Ted, room temperature. Well, Ted, whenever you kind of, whenever you step like 10 feet into the room, let's say, okay, your, in, your envisioning sort of takes over and you can at least yeah. make out the fact that there are no heat signatures pigging, but you can make out the general definitions of the corridor. So it continues right. on for another 30 feet. So that five foot wide corridor is a total of 60 feet in length. Um, but there is also a, uh, a, uh, it, it, uh, turns to the South at, in the middle of the, um, uh, uh, let's say after 35 feet, there is a five foot wide passageway that, that heads directly South. Does that make sense? Like that? Uh, correct. You got it. Yep. Okay. A little bit um, sloppy. Oh, and I would say that with your dark vision too, you could see that at the end of the 60 feet, there is an identical small door on the eastern end. Okay. Ah, and that's the okay. extent of your that's the extent of your infravision. So all right. Mort, can you tell if that if that bad smell's coming from that uh door in the south there? Yeah, I will move up to the uh the uh the 30 that 35 foot mark there. Yeah. And I won't I won't actually go through that door, mm -hmm. but or that passageway, I should say, but I'll kind of poke my head around the corner, give it a sniff and a look. Okay. So I would say actually that when you're at that junction, you can make out with your dark vision that there are some cold body like lumps uh resting oh. against the eastern door farther to the east when you peer around the corner to the south you could see that um, there is a five foot wide passageway that leads down for um uh, 25 feet before ending in another small door 25 feet but it appears uh your nose tells you that um the the stench is coming from the lumps towards the east yep i'm gonna say a turn has passed uh, all right, I will relay this back, and um, I say we bring the torch up and we creep toward the lumps. What do you think? Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, I tell you what, if you guys don't mind, as soon as we get them in the light, I'll just chuck a javelin in them. If they're if they're really dead, they won't care. That sounds good. Uh, oh, Ted, uh, let me um, let me re revise. You actually. You actually smell the stents of decay coming from both directions. I'm, I'm apologize. Oh, okay. It seems to be stronger coming from the east, probably because there's a door to the south. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Sorry. So, what did you? What did Matt say? What did you say, Matt? So, if we, yeah, if we go down that hallway, um, the close range of a javelin is thirty feet. So, as soon as they are in the at the edge of the light, he's going to chuck a javelin at the dead lumps and see if they care. Okay. So yeah, you chuck that javelin um, and they, uh, it, we'll say it hits and it just, it moves just like you would think a body would move, right? Like there's no reaction at all. All right. Um, I think they might really be dead. So did you bring light with you, Neil? Yeah, we're um, all coming in now. Oh, you're coming in. Okay. Right all right, down. cool. So we'll end it here with the description of what you kind of see right at the uh, at the edge of the eastern door there. So there appears to be the body. If I said two, I meant three. I'm sorry. Sorry. There are three um, obvious bodies of slain goblins. They appear to be wearing the same attire as the ones that you talked with, um, but they are not burned. Okay. Um, they have been stripped of all their belongings. They're completely naked. And, uh, and not only that, but it's kind of gross. It, there are unmistakable signs that they have been expertly butchered for choice sections of them. Ooh. Uh, beast okay. man. Back on the menu, bro. I don't, I don't <laughs> know if the beastmen did that. I think the other goblins did that and hid their buddies over here in embarrassment. Mm. I think there's a reason they were, they were hanging out and surviving down here and they were asking for rations. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you, let you ponder that, that, uh, uh, that supposition. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll end it there. Um, we'll, we'll probably pick up next time with B team on the surface no, oh, no. <laughs> and, and see what happens. But, uh, lots of, lots of cool stuff happened this session. You got yeah, loads wow. of info, which is really, really cool. So, uh, yeah, really, really well done guys. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so 
uh, yeah, th I think that'll do it for uh, the first session of 2024, session 53. So thank you all for joining. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget that we have a Patreon that you can certainly join and to check out our first publication, Feats of Exploration, which is helpful for any one of your OSR games that you're playing. <laughs> and in addition, we couldn't have done any of this without our Conqueror level Patreon members. Ted, take it away. Conan. What is best in life? <laughs> to be listed at the Conqueror level at 3d6downtheline.com. <laughs> and where are Conquerors? We have Matt Koenig, Chip Schultz, Terry Barney, Eric Lawson, Mando NZ, Faisal, James Doig, Robert Valdez, Eric Lawson, Grunt, Andrew Str Schroker, MM, very enigmatic MM, <laughs> Michael Schilling, Stefano DiMaiolo, Will Davies, Summon Toast, Adam the DM, Jib Cutter, Scott Yearsley, Mech Jack, and Dyer Gru. Thank you to all of our Conqueror <laughs> members for allowing us to continue and uh, hopefully make our productions better and uh, just better all around. So thank you so much for, for your continued support, everybody. And uh, thank you to all the other Patreon members as well. Don't forget that you can also join our free Discord and come chat with us. We're pretty active on there, and we have a great community of very, very friendly people. And until next time, everybody, have a great week, and we will see you next time. Bye now. Happy New Year. Thanks, John. Happy New Year.